3.5 million couples are in long-distance marriage relationships, according to the U.S. Census. Many of them are happily married. There's just some distance between them. Southbound I-15, no major problems from the downtown area through Point of the Mountain. The Bankses are doing marriage by the mile. Jeremy Banks' boss just told him the job will soon be taking him to the oil fields in North Dakota. Looking for an exit sign. Gotta get out of here, get it. Gotta move on and continue working. slipping through the radios. Last year, his wife Sierra moved to Salt Lake to become a stylist. Have you ever just done something and been so proud of it? <laughs> 700 miles apart. They're in what's called a commuter marriage. Yeah, most of the time we've been together, we've kind of been in a long distance. So that's what makes it easier. And they're not alone. More and more married couples are making long distance relationships work, according to the U.S. Census. Many of them are young. I think it's if you're not used to being away from your other, then it's hard. But when you're used to it, it's kind of like just another day. Couples therapist Dr. Jonathan Swinton has noticed the increase. Now when people can find that perfect job or that thing they're perfectly trained to do that might be somewhere else or they could climb up to a better job somewhere else, people have been more willing it seems in recent time to to break that trend. Dr. Swinton says couples in long distance relationships have to be committed to finding time together. Right now Jeremy and Sierra and their son Colton <laughs> meet in the middle at their home in Big Piney, Wyoming. You can do it. Oh. You made it. You made it. <sighs> the worst part for Jeremy is not watching Colton grow up. What if he tries doing that? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm missing out. And it's not how Sierra pictured it either. Let's work hard now and we'll enjoy life when we're older. And though commuter marriages are more common, <laughs> it's still not traditional. But the things that make any relationship work are the same. Love, trust, and respect. A point worth driving home. Later in the hour, we'll look at how commuter couples are making it work and why so many people are getting into this type of relationship. In studio, Ashton Goodell, Fox 13 News, Utah. They're called commuter marriages, where one spouse travels to the other. Often family or jobs pull them apart, but it's now easier to make long distance work. There's distance between a lot of married couples. Yeah, we've always been pretty much not together. But in Jeremy and Sierra Banks's case, it's not emotional. It's literal distance. They're 700 miles apart, but they try to get together every weekend. Yeah, it gives you something to look forward to, that's for sure. Commuter marriages have gained traction partly because of the economy. People go where the jobs are. Right now, we're just trying to save some money to get some stuff paid off, and then hopefully we can settle down a little bit. And though they're away from each other, cell phones, social media, and web chatting have made it easier to merge lives. Believe it or not, we hardly ever text. <laughs> She's always texting, too, so. Also, more couples from different parts of the country are meeting online. But couples therapist Dr. Jonathan Swinton says it's difficult to sustain love through text. They, they really can be, if they're used right, helpful for couples who, who have commuter marriages. But my experience has been they're really good at doing that stuff at the beginning, but they stop doing it as much as time goes on. But there's more than one way to make it work. Look, we're going to Skype on Facebook, okay? Dr. Swinton suggests coming up with a plan to spend time together. Talk whenever and however you can, and go on phone dates at least once a week, where you spend two to three hours talking about what's on your mind. All right, I love you, bye. These are the same suggestions he gives to people in traditional relationships. The idea is to feel together, even when apart. But that's that's all it comes down to is you've got to be able to trust because I mean, they can't be in North Dakota and you be texting them all the time, worried. You know what I mean? What are you doing? Who are you with at the second? You just can't do that. Sierra and Jeremy say there's no going back, so they keep working on it as they move forward.
A lot of couples get into commuter marriages for financial reasons, but it's expensive to maintain two houses and to travel back and forth. Dr. Swinson says what might look like a solution could end up being a burden. In studio, Ashton Goodell, Fox 13 News, Utah.